from ancient times. The directors of our fate rain ash down on us from the grey heavens. All right. They conceal themselves beneath us, above us, and among us, staying hidden until we muster up the resolve to meet their malevolent gaze. Having been discovered, they appear in the flesh for a mere moment, and then they expire horribly, wreaking havoc on the world that they rightfully... Alright, let's get, uh, let's get stuck, stuck back into it. And... This should be better. Alrighty. Here we are back in the town. What was I doing last time? Two weeks ago. Uh, so yes, we need to go back and see where the younger I think. That was the last thing that we were trying to do. We we're trying to help him with his, uh, his quote-unquote uh, panacea problem where it turns out that the uh, that the worms might actually be framing him and this I mean that's part of what I really like about pathologic is it's uh, continual sort of second guessing of characters uh, motives aren't simple they aren't cut and dry uh, you always do get little twists uh, in the tale of a quest uh, like that. Like, oh, hello, teleporting guards. Okay, so we need to make our way, oops, to make our way all the way back over here. And as you can see, yeah, town is pretty dangerous today. Uh, and we are indeed infected. So you can tell when he does that sort of heaving breath and the sort of the world shimmers uncomfortably around us. Uh, we'll see if this guy has anything. Uh, right, he's one of the just. He's a patroller. You can only barter for some reason with the guys who are standing still at sort of. at the entrance and exits of every district. I'm not exactly sure why that is. Okay. Let's see, here we are. Just trying to question, yeah, I've only... I'm actually starting to run out of resources, I think. The last couple of streams I've been, been a little bit too too arrogant with, with my use of resources. Um, we could try and have a look inside one of these houses. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll have a wee look inside this one. Uh, just make sure our gun's loaded. That does always tend to help. One. Anyone else? No. Nope. Okay. We're good. Really good track for the uh, the indoor indoor horror sort of feel. One thing, yeah, I really do like how the buildings are just sort of put back exactly how they were before, just without people. The three the three states of houses and the original pathologic uh, really are something, something very cool. Just how it switches from lively but locked uh, to like desolate. Uh, still got people in it, but they're all dying horribly and then just basically abandoned. Okay, nothing. This is the bit I like here. When the voice goes higgledy piggledy, I swear that's what they say. The track is very spooky. Oh crap! Love it when the gun misfires. I think I wasted almost all my bullets. Yes. It's not quite as good a house as I was hoping for, but at least there's some medicine and food in here. I mean. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. Uh, curtain, because I just, I love just the amount of curtains I'm dragging around with me these days, just in case. 
some water. What's interesting as well, I always liked how the water bottles almost appear to be plastic, uh, like squat little plastic canteens, but in the in here they're, they're clearly uh, sort of glass of some kind, and then they switch up the top left. Uh, I, always, I always found that slightly strange, but it adds to the, you know, the whole anachronistic visual vibe of, of the game and that nothing quite seems to fit together cohesively, which strangely makes the whole game feel oddly cohesive uh, and that nothing quite comes together as you think it should. And that's basically the, the aesthetic vibe of the game is that it's all deeply uncanny and uncomfortable and no one, uh, no one really seems to know quite what to make of anything. Uh, I'm gonna try to take this guy out. It's basically what we need here. We need to shore ourselves up with money at this point. Oh. Just goad him down the street here for a second. I swear, when I go back, when the stream is finished and I go back to it, I look back through it, 50% of the footage is just going to be me backpedaling backwards and forwards with these stupid robbers. Ugh. Oh, oh I'm, getting, I'm getting sloppy. Alright, fortunately I have like 50 billion bandages. I uh, can have this bad knife. I'll take a good one. What about you? Uh, yep, oh... See another zero percent one, yeah. Cool. Uh, all right. So yeah, the, the plan is still to head back to Young Vlad and sort of accuse him of being duplicitous, as we accuse most pathologic characters of being duplicitous. But it, it is that it is that sense of duplicitousness that uh, that gives the characters in Pathologic this real sense of of being alive and real, even though they're some of the most static. Uh, NPCs uh, you can probably encounter because they just stay in their house and they either stay fixed to one spot or in the really fancy cases they'll they go for a wee walk uh, around their around their room but I come to think of it I think young Vlad is literally the only one who uh, even technically appears to move uh, sometimes NPCs will move but only if you are uh, only if you're not looking There's some fun going over there, fun going on. And that's something I like as well, is the general sense of, yeah, things just getting more and more degraded. I mean, the town's societal fabric is not exactly strong to begin with, considering that the first thing they do in response to a crisis is start a witch hunt. Um, but then you sort of see things devolve further and further from there. And, uh, and I mean, there is... What, what always impresses me about the town, no matter how many times I, I play through this game, is actually just how, how it manages to feel consistently, consistently real. Um, and I think they do achieve that through the presentation of the, uh, of the town society. Uh, it, it is presented really consistently. Um, oh, come on. There are reasons for it uh, to logically exist and function the way it does. And even just from small details, we can sort of start to extrapolate larger, more important bits of information uh, about not the setting, but the characters and about how the way the characters fit into the, uh, into the well-realized world. I think that's part of what makes certain characters in certain games really good, right? Um, is figuring out how and why they exist in a certain world in a certain way. And if things have been thought out well, and you can sort of start to glean information about characters, uh, even just from setting details. Uh, and that's what I like about how every NPC in this game... I know I just literally just complained about them moving around a bit and whatnot. Um, about them not moving around at all. But the fact that they all have their own unique house uh, lets the designer add some of their own shine i guess some some of their own personality to where they live and that's an important reflection we don't get in a lot of game characters their uh their surroundings and the way that a character lives um or what they choose to surround themselves with 
uh, is a really easy visual storytelling way of, of informing us exactly what uh, what is going on uh, with their mental state even. Uh, but it can also inform us about the yeah, character's backstory without them needing to sort of to spell it out. And the fact that young Vlad lives uh, in a bricked up house that doesn't have any sunlight uh, on the edge of town uh, can tell you a couple of things, right? It sort of informs us that uh, he's he sort of he wants to present himself as barely being a part of the town's functioning. He he wants he w- wants to sort of gravitate towards the step and get these people on his side. At least that's what he sort of wants to project. Uh, but he also wants to remain hidden while he does that. There's sort of a sense of there's a sense of shame, right, for, for young Vlad, and he's never quite sure exactly uh, how he fits in 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 the town's structure. And that's just reflected by the by the positioning of his house, uh, and the fact that you know the Canes live in the shadow of the polyhedron that's significant in itself. Uh, and you know the the bachelor starts the game in the rich, on the rich or the intellectual side of town, uh, and all of these kinds of you know these little details, um, they really add to sort of a cohesive, thematically diverse and interesting world, which a lot of games simply I don't think they even sort of consider. Um, or if they do consider it, they're not they're not quite so deeply layered uh, as pathologic is. And I mean, it, it's not it's not an easy thing to do, you know. Uh, all right, time to have this conversation with Young Blair. Have you heard? The military arrives tomorrow. Oh, does it? Wow, how interesting. So you haven't left. That certainly does you credit. Well, I found the worm poison makers, but they told me that you, Master Blair, have also dabbled in the panacea black market. Yes, when I learned that Barak had concocted a panacea, I decided to completely seize the flow of goods. That's how the informers came to know. I requested it on purpose. Make no mistake, this isn't about greed. I simply thought it would be prudent to control this market. One would emerge anyway. So you're concerned for the bounders only a disguise. You are only ever concerned with turning a profit. It seems my old reputation will take a while to get rid of. Your knowledge is outdated, Bachelor. Things have changed. I have changed. This morning I wanted to seize the panacea black market, so I bought up everything that Barak has made and distributed, and I gave away all that I had bought. No money. Well, a little money, so that it wouldn't like, look like I'm offering a donation. I gave it all to the bound, the ones who needed it the most, in my opinion. Those who nearly died because of me. Who? I promise to keep their names secret. I'm wary of Clara, you see. She's very good at getting what she needs from people, both words and things. Well, one of them is Mark Immortel. He's not hiding it, but the situation is different. He's running a plague house, after all. But you have spared at least one for yourself, I hope. Haven't you? I need neither money nor protection from death now. The latter because I want to give the plagues the opportunity to punish me for my acts. And the former, please spare me your mockery, is because I now aspire to something. Call me sentimental, I won't reveal it. I don't want to scare the dream away. You've given me serious food for thought, thank you. And again, like the story sort of gets turned around. Uh, you sort of go into the room expecting, oh, he's uh, he seized all the panacea. He wants to do something not so nice with it himself. Oops. Um, he wants to do something not so nice with it himself, but it, it turns out he's, he's given it all away and he's become a bit of a nihilist and sort of expects punishment uh, for his deeds. And I don't think uh, we've yet exactly found out what where the youngers quote unquote deeds are yet exactly um though it has been a while since since i've played so all of the different uh all of the different plot lines i'm afraid i can't remember where each thing is is revealed um but i i think that uh we sort of learn exactly the gravity of his of his deeds and crimes uh either later today or uh the day afterwards because today should be the day that we enter the the abattoir uh, for the first time, and the bachelor gets to have a really long, nice look inside. Um, well, that's what he hopes he's gonna he's gonna see anyway. Uh, how are my stats going? Reputation is for yeah. When I get inside the theater, I think I'm gonna need to do some do some healing and bandaging. I think. Things aren't really going so well. Can you leave me alone just for five minutes? Um, what do we got? 
So this is why the bachelor sloshing around with uh, over 50 water bottles always pays off, just in case there's some drunk carrying around extra cloth for you, for me. And I'm going to use those now. Bump that up. Boost immunity. Hey, it's Frank Alone's. Yeah, it's it's going good. Um, just uh, finally, finally jumping back into it. How are you doing? Glad you could uh, you could catch a stream. Nice to see you yes. here. See who my audience is now. They really applaud. Blah blah blah. They also never boo us. As you can see, we have a full house every night. Tell me, has Olgimsky the Younger really sold you several vials of Panacea? Didn't even sell them. He gave them to me basically for free, or maybe for a token payment. You know, I never expected something like this from him. I would suspect an intricate and crafty scheme on his part, but I think I have also changed, so I believe him. Incredible. I'm starting to suspect he's in league with you. I like how cynical and skeptical the uh, the bachelor can come across as, which makes a lot of sense considering all the all the crap he's had to put up with already. He isn't. First of all, I also believe in lofty ideals. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Salvation is not about the panacea. The panacea is transitory. But I recently came to realize something that has blown me out of the water completely. It made me really evaluate my worldview. So I believe in Blade's transformation. What did you realize? That fate can be overcome. I'm so tired of all this. You know, many people consider my shows to be mere tricks, but I know that's untrue. They are daily reminders of predetermination reigning over us. It's depressing. But now I see that a miracle is not completely impossible. Please go on. What makes it possible? It's the tower. The only thing that leads the plots of my performances astray is the tower. The tower and everything that has to do with it, those are the only things that cannot be tossed and turned and manipulated like puppets. A miracle overcomes the inevitable. The tower can do miracles. It all makes sense. Sure. So what have you done with your vial of panacea? So this is what I what I like about this bit is the game is sort of starting to to really lay it on thick uh, to the player basically that there is something really important, intrinsically important about the polyhedron beyond its crazy look. Uh, and after Ava's uh, sad demise, we start to see a shift uh, in thinking. Hopefully. If the game is working on you, hopefully the player will experience that shift in thinking as well and start to see the polyhedron as the one thing in town worth defending. That's kind of what uh, the last the last set of Bachelor's Days are all about, is about this realisation. And that's what should theoretically lead you to pick the Bachelor's ending, um, should motivate you to see, at least on your first playthrough, the Bachelor's utopian ending as the good ending. And I'm not sure that I do anymore, uh, but certainly it feels... Um, that ending feels like more of a victory than the uh, the nasty, nasty one where you lose, which I've only seen once. I think because I, I think you can see that if you refuse to make a choice. I think if you just refuse to do anything, uh, the plague wins, which is a which is a good way of hammering home the games, the game's themes as well. So what have you done with your Violet Panacea? I have an idea about what to do with it. I won't share it with you. Sorry. I fear this changeling. So here's Clara coming in again. She is a remarkable foe and a worthy opponent. When it when in comes miracle when I think it's meant to say when it comes to miracle making. So yeah, this stage of the game. Only just a few typos uh, sort of start to slip in, which is really understandable considering the size of the script and the incredible how incredibly hard it, it was to translate from Russian to to English and keep it with the same the same mood and, and feeling. A rather nimble girl. She's gathering intelligence now, you see, and her intentions are dark. Her intuition is spot on, so I'd rather she knew less. Don't you trust me? Oh, undoubtedly. In that case, tell me at least who else Vlad shared panacea with. Oh fine. He gave it to the girls, to Yulia, Lara, and the third one, the Biggs, to keep her name secret under any circumstances. Think of them as the three passe. I see. Thank you, Mark. Are they playing tricks on me again? It shouldn't be hard to tell. Mark gave the panacea to those whose lives are in most immediate peril. Naomi to Lara, Yulia, and some individual who expressed a desire to remain incognito. What do you make of the little pictures of real people that accompany 
the characters in this game. Some I really don't like, but Marx is perfect, I think. Marx is... A man would rather say evil of himself than say nothing. Marx is, really is uh, perfect, I agree. Um, what's interesting as well is that, obviously, the, the classic HD was the first one I played, and then I went back and sort of had a, had a play of about half of the original version of the game with the really sort of wonky translation and i was really interested to see that some of the pictures were, were different like uh they were framed slightly differently which which is really interesting in and of itself that the, that the developers thought that those original photos didn't capture their essence well enough and then in pathologic 2 the the alpha version i think the the or the whatever it was, the pre-release demo thing that, that they released where you could play like half the first day or whatever, that there were those, that those original black and white ones instead of these sort of sepia-toned ones were the, were the photos that you could use. I found that really interesting that they chose to, to change them for Classic HD and then revert even just briefly uh, to those original photos uh, for Pathologic 2. But as for, yeah, as for whether all of them work, I think the issue is that yeah, some of them don't mesh well with with the presentation of the of the in game model. I think is I think might be the problem. Um, you can sort of see this mark even with the you know rudimentary face technology making this sort of exact face. Like it, it really does fit his fit his mo. Um, but I'm just trying to think of the like I can open the list of the bound right. I found the Evictors, uh, I always found Victors a bit funny. Um, Georgie's I really like. Uh, Andre's and Peter's I actually really like. Um, I think I like Maria's original photo, not the classic HD one. That one's sort of her head is, her head is sort of up. Um, she looks a bit more mistressy rather than the sort of really pensive uh, photo here, which I mean would like it's still a nice photo. I think it it's not bad, but uh, I think her original one worked better. Um, I, yeah, Ava's Ava's one. I'm, I mean, I'm not really, sh not really sure I like that one either. Um, I'm trying to. Th I think Yulia's one is really good. Um, was it Kater? I think Katerina's one that uh, the original photo of Katerina made her look really young. Um, which I know confused confused a few people, considering her age is sort of ambiguous. Um, judging from her character model, which looks really old, and then her photo is a bit younger. Um, which I mean works for Katerina, I think, because there's sort of that fusion between uh, like she's obviously overusing morphine, and she's she's hugely depressed uh, and whatnot. Was Se Seberov, was Alexander Seberov the one? See now, I f now I feel I need to like run around and uh, check all the faces again. But um, I feel like his one I didn't like too much. But maybe I'm mis misremembering. Some of them, yeah. That's a, it's a <laughs> it's a really interesting point. Is that some of the character models seem more like the character than the photos, and some of the photos seem more like the character than the character models. Uh, and I guess it's that, I mean, it's that blurring of the lines between reality and, and the virtual that, that is something that really interests me. Um, and sort of pursuing, I guess it depends how you see the characters, I suppose, and how you relate to them, how you gravitate towards them. Um, but the fact that they didn't use real photos in Pathologic 2 is, is itself really interesting. I don't know, do you... Do you have any thoughts about um, about the the portraits, etc? Because um, because it, it is a really interesting question. Day eight, by the end of which the bachelor can prove once again that the earth is never up to any good. That darn earth, only su sustaining life. Peter Stamartin's photo looks like the no bitches meme, and that will haunt me to the end of time. Okay, I need to. Uh... Yeah, that, no, I. Uh... <laughs> I gotta, I gotta give you that one. Yeah, <laughs> I, I really gotta give you that one. I, that will, congratulations. Uh, 
That that's a new hauntology that will now haunt me to the end of time. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. That's delightful. What ones? Um, what photos don't you like out of out of curiosity? Um, just gonna stand here and scoff some food. Wander back this way. Okay, I I mean I don't think I have a real objective yet. I'm still waiting on a letter, so I'll just. Uh, I'll try and see Yulia or something, see if there's any more... I don't even know if there's any more dialogue to be gleaned from them about the Panacea stuff, but... We can try... <sighs> Alright, um... I think the touch almost that I like the most is that... Uh, all of the... The portraits of the regular people are just these sort of faceless dolls. You can sort of imagine the the kids. Uh, they just have like this one spear doll uh, that stands in for all the side characters, and then special dolls for all the for all the named characters. I think that that really works. Uh, that really works really well thematically. Um, how much? Yeah, that's five, isn't it? Agree about Ava, yeah. Some of the kids really don't fit either, in my opinion. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that, actually. Um, I'd almost forgotten to uh, that some of the some of the kids' portraits, yeah, they really don't fit. Um, they certainly, I think the kids' portraits actually look better in this one than they do in the original, mostly. Um, but. Then again, there's little Vlad looks a little too modern to me, like some annoying guy from two thousand and three. Yes, yeah, I I get I get that as well. Um, that he's got sort of this slightly too modern vibe, which I mean, in some sense, you know, you can like you can argue oh, it's it's a bit anachronistic or whatever. Um, it fits with the vibe, but there is there is something just a little too off about him. I agree. 0%, I'll take your lockpick. Uh, I was absolutely, uh, I'm always absolutely entranced with that stairway to heaven in particular, it's so cool. Uh, normal district, hopefully there's a little kid wandering around, little girl. Because uh, then I can... Trade for some smarter, but no one is there. Lack of a better way to put it, the ones that don't work look like they know what an iPhone is. Absolutely, that's a really that's a really nice way of putting it. Um, is yeah, there's there's a sense of of modernity around them uh, that that translates somehow to the picture. It just doesn't look like yeah, it doesn't look like they fit uh, in the atmosphere of the town. But some of them really do work, which yeah, which is interesting. I'd like to know how long they worked on the. Uh, on the photos, because obviously with some of them changing between the original and the and the remastered, um, there was obviously some thought put into them. I just would like would like to know, yeah, how many sort of other other iterations they had to go through of the photos before they settled on one. Most basic things these days. Yeah, Yulia's Yulia's one is pretty decent, I think. I had a feeling. Tell me, is it true that Vlad Olgimsky gave you a vial of panacea? So this is the panacea after all. Incredible. Didn't you know? He told me that Barak has managed to compound a cure. He said that I should drink the contents of the vial if I started to feel unwell. It's interesting to note that he warned me quite deliberately against telling Clara about it. I gave him a nod of absent-minded consent. And what do you know, the very next moment Clara was at my doorstep. Hmm. Who else did he offer? Panacea to You know what? Come back tomorrow. We'll be able to hold a much more productive discussion then, which may be of some use to us both. Meanwhile, I need to think. You see, everything that went on is rather curious in the light of certain theories I entertain. Numbers, equations, calculations of possibility, everything you don't seem to be too fond of yourself. 
Uh, sure. Uh, uh, how did how did you know I don't like maths? Uh, very well. I'll be back tomorrow. Um, one question that just just occurred to me is: I wonder what the bachelor looks like to everyone else. As he comes in like, does he come in looking like the emperor from Star Wars or something, with like this curtain like draped over his head, sort of pulled around his pulled around his chin, and it just looks absolutely horrible. Or does he take his curtain off at the door and uh, fold it up nicely and hang it on the coat rack? I'm sure they wouldn't begrudge him a little messiness, right? I'm going to see if I can run to Lara's house. Because I think it strikes me that, yeah, I don't, I don't even know if I tried to talk to them on my first playthrough after. Um, I don't, yeah, I'm not actually sure if I've seen that, seen that dialogue before or if I have. It's been so long that uh, I genuinely can't remember. I want to barter. How much is 10? Okay. Just gonna go around you. Okay, so I'm still waiting on there. I guess I should go see the Inquisitor after this. Probably stop stalling. Just make sure that I actually have a mission. I haven't seen Lara in a while. Dogs are howling. Why? Now, Lara's one's better than I remember. I don't know why I thought her one was really not fitting, but it's not that bad. Uh, I saw this. There was this really wonderful post at some stage online. I can't remember where I saw it, but where someone had reimagined this Lara's outfit in the graphical style of. Of Pathologic 2, I thought that was a really neat experiment. Um, interesting, yeah, like really highlighted the difference in, in design choice. This this Lara looks a lot more furtive, a lot more out of it, whereas Pathologic 2 Lara just sort of looks looks a bit more depressed, but also sort of quite quite a bit younger, I guess. Tomorrow, this place will be crawling the soldiers. Oh, what will become of us? And every new rumor I hear contradicts the previous one. Lara, is it true that Vlad the Younger is a soldier of Panacea? No, it's not. Oh, why do you even have to ask? Are you all trying to torture me on purpose? Lara, I know everything. Just tell me how it went. How much did you make your shell out? Nothing. It wasn't an item to sell. It was a gift. Have you seen the man recently? He's positively transformed. Something's happened to him. I'm good at spotting these things. But it has occurred to you that I may have parted with my... But has it occurred to you that I may have parted with my panacea already? Yulia, for example, gave hers to Clara. At least that's what Clara says. So why do you think I haven't done the same? Yeah, people say the thief has her way of making others part with their belongings. You know what? Please come back tomorrow, and tomorrow we'll talk about it once more. Tomorrow everything will change. It's about many various intertwining plots and agendas. As for now, I don't have a panacea. Sorry. You've let me down, Lara. By the way, do you by any chance know the unit number of the ships that have been sent here? No, I don't. And there's a nice little uh, hint as to her sort of her ultimate motives, her character arc, uh, which I think I think plays out a little bit better in the second game. Um, I guess probably just because uh, Artemy has has a much closer relationship with her than than in this game. That you actually sort of get a chance to connect with her as a as a human being. Yay, another bandage. I love just how saturated the screen gets with color as well. It's it's really delightful. I realize that may have sounded sarcastic, but uh, genuinely, I I really love the way that it sort of floods with floods with color to make the world seem abnormal uh, it's a really it's another really good visual visual trick uh, and really simple too um, but it's not it's not overdone either uh, the sort of the normal districts appear quite sort of cool and and calm and then the plague districts sort of the, the green just gives them a really moldy diseased feel uh, I'm just gonna pop in and see if I can chat to Maria real quick Hello. 
The Inquisitor wants to take away everything we lived for and were proud of. I can barely hold on to the memory of my mother. Two women are living in me now. I think I'm beginning to understand her. My dear, my beloved mother. I'm starting to sense her thoughts and moods. The feelings that used to drive her. You're holding on to her memory. What does it mean? Hush, do not wake her up. She's asleep now. Soon my father will take her away from me. Forever. Is she inside you? Yes, two souls are living in me now. My mother has found her ultimate shelter in my heart. I am the only one who still loves her and remembers her. Hush, do not wake her. She's asleep now. Mommy. Alright, I'm leaving. Sorry to interrupt you. See very serious uh, family bonding exercise going on. Swap, soul swapping. But I do really like the the concept of uh, that the canes have of this memories of people roosting in other people's people's hearts and memories. Okay, that was a bit ruthless. All right. Um, let's see how the often these guys must get really tired. What? The first part of the game is over, Bachelor Dankowski. Its meaning has been as follows: the powers that be gave you a task with a catch to learn the truth. They set a definitive condition: this truth has to be nice. Your honor and the fate of your laboratory were at stake. Would you care to learn something? Go ahead. Thanatica has already been destroyed. There's nothing left. The place itself is in ruins. Your research is in ashes. Your papers have been burnt. Richard Tellman made sure of it personally. And now I'm going to tell you about the law. Why not? Go ahead. In accordance with the law, the very logic of our world inevitably dictates the destruction of anything unnatural. Anything that tries to break its own non-capitalized laws. The disease is nothing more than a tool. It is an instrument of inevitability. I agree. The idea isn't new. It occurred to me before. Inevitability. Gruesome inevitability is our true enemy. An enemy that cannot be defeated. By anyone. Anywhere. The only thing you can do is get what's dear to you out of its way. Don't make enemies with inevitability. This preaching would have made more sense before the plague. Say what you will, but fighting this enemy is my duty, as it is yours. You're right. The second part of the game is beginning. Our current task is to remain true to ourselves. We'll keep the word we've given to the powers that be, both of us. It wasn't just you, mind. We'll uncover the truth, take a foreign detail out of the mechanism, and stop the rot before it devours this land. We only have to find out how it started. And so we're back to the source now. Sources. It's all about sources, isn't it? We just can't get away from them, we... Sorcerers, if you pardon the lame pun. But sorcerers do not wield magic. The source. I'll tell you where to look for the source. So you think you're well aware of what the law is, aren't you? I think I am. Well, I think you aren't. Let me tell you about the law. It's not a state law, but rather a natural one. When mysterious evil emerges from non-existence, it's a clear sign that this law has been violated. Disease is a retribution for trespassers. It's an attempt to restore the balance. I can see where you're going with this. This town is a minuscule cosmos, and it's the cosmos for its inhabitants. It's too remote, too distant from the rest of the world to serve as an, as an effective part of any other mechanism. So it's a mechanism in and of itself. A mechanism that's been disrupted. There must have been a flaw, a blemish, a redundant detail, perhaps. I want to find it. I really like this, um, this is an aside, I really like this philosophy, I really like this conversation. I think it's memorably um, one of the best in, in the game. And I really like this way of thinking in that, uh, I mean, you don't just have to look at places this way, you can look at incidents, people, etc., etc. but the fact that the town is a universe unto itself uh, is a really, really cool way of thinking about it. And also thinking about it as as a mechanism uh, that's even more important, obviously, considering it's it's a game, it's, it's coded, uh, it's literally a mechanism, it's reflexive uh, to a certain degree. 
uh, but it still follows out it's a set of commands. And I just, I mean, it's just, it's just a really cool way of framing the world um, and also alluding that the Inquisitor knows uh, a lot more about the nature of the universe than, than the Bachelor does, than the player does that there's something higher up that she understands and that in some sense, despite her seeming like fatalism, there's a kind of spirituality going on, a weird kind of spirituality um, where she recognizes that this place is basically all there is. It's the only thing that matters and finding what the problem is, is the one and only thing that matters. And I mean, I'm just, yeah, I just, love these kinds of conversations um and you don't really get anything this it's really hard to find another game that that comes up with stuff this rich where you can sort of get really deep into the actual mechanics of the the universe that the the game is talking about where you can talk structural philosophy um i think in my first or second artemy video i talk about how the relationship between the step and the town and the player and the sort of the step religion all centers around these kinds of yeah like ideas of an imperfect person sort of forming the world like you know the, the demiurge um kind of situation where it's uh where god made something imperfect and then that imperfect being made our world um the powers that be are basically sort of a kind of a kind of demiurge uh imperfect beings playing with an imperfect world because they're imperfect so therefore what they create is also imperfect and that that in itself i mean that that's that's what i chase in in my discussions about about art uh, and about the meaning of artworks, et cetera, et cetera. I think it's, I think it's a really important point. Um, and it's, it's really, I, I mean, I could go on, I could go on, but, um, it's a great conversation. It's, it's just a really good, uh, memorable way to, to immerse yourself in, in a world that other mediums don't allow for. I mean, you can't, only in very specific kinds of films are you allowed to get away with rambly philosophical conversations. Um, and even then, you know, most, most, uh, most script writers would be like, no, you gotta like cut, cut that down. We just want the bare essentials and, and whatnot. Um, cause film, film often is very economical. Um, or the good, the very best ones are. And that's not to say you can't have really great economical film conversations, etc. Because you can, and, and there's, there's so many of them out there. But there's something about being able to really slow down and immerse yourself in the shoes of these characters and being able to pick responses, even if they ultimately don't mean anything. Uh, you know, I just, uh, that's, that's, that's why I love the, uh, both both books and games in particular is that it gives you the chance to really slow down, to slow down and think. Um, often, oftentimes that's, that's really what I'm after, I guess. All right. Um, sorry to keep you, sorry to leave you hanging. I see your point We're off the line of thinking. Thank you. Uh, well, if the line of thinking you've just demonstrated was sincere, I'd be willing to agree with you. Um, okay, did you off you're offering a mission? There's little time left, and I still need to do so much. Time is short, so there is a faulty detail in this mechanism of ours. We only need to find it. Where do we start? What would you suggest? The abattoir. I still haven't got a chance to get in there, and I suspect this is where it all began. The abattoir hypothesis is already being worked on by someone else, a person who had somehow managed to infiltrate the place even before my arrival. I try to follow in his footsteps, of course, that would make a lot of sense. But I wouldn't be in any hurry to do so if I were you. Who knows what danger lies inside. At least the old Gimskis will stop getting in my way. Are you interested in the abattoir because you believe the pest might have been brought to the town by cattle? No, I rather suspect the butchers, their line of trade is something to do with the soil. I think they may be doing some digging. 
According to your notes, the disease might have sprung from below the ground. Am I correct? Indeed, just like the previous plague epidemic, the e epidemiological hazard appeared in the south during coal mining, and the climate was comparable to the local one too, by the way. Have you already checked wa water, specifically river water? I've investigated the water hypothesis already. Yes, there's frightened Lud... I think... I don't think Luddites is the word. It should be Luddites. Frightened Luddites have destroyed the town water intake. Which led to a malfunction of the town water supply system. We found ourselves in a lot of trouble because of that. I hope we check this hypothesis thoroughly, though. Before we get on with inspecting buildings, we need to make sure the disease was not waterborne. Wells, springs, the river, or maybe a young new stream. Anything. All right. There is one suspicious well I'd like to check. Care to tell me more about the suspicious well? Young Vladislav Olgimsky has a rather peculiar hobby. I've been told he's looking for old cultural layers, the remnants of an ancient culture or something... I've also been told he's looking for oil. Neither explanation sounds convincing. What kind of person is he trustworthy, I think? Is this the reason you two have managed to get on until now without breaching the subject of the well? Yes. Investigate this further. Ask him. If he refuses to talk, well, there are a number of ways to inspire social interaction. And no, I'm obviously not implying torture. This may so happen that he suddenly gets in the mood to explain everything to you. He may need a fair hearing to justify his actions. Do you understand? Sounds very much doable. I'll talk to him. All right, back to young Vlad for like the third or fourth time already this day. I think the third time. Just yet. Yeah. Fantastic uh, conversations. I think the the bits with the Inquisitor, like in any other game, you know, you'd have a big action set piece, but Pathologic just has like conversation set pieces. Uh, the way that conversation unfolds. Uh, reveals a lot about the nature of the uh, the game's universe um, and that's particularly important and it also reveals a lot about the beliefs that you're going to have to sort of grapple with uh, over the next couple of days of in-game time. Uh, nope, nothing there. Love that pretty much every character is some kind of metaphor, but the game has such empathy and humanity for its characters that they work as real people as well. If that makes any sense at all, yes, it, it absolutely does. I think, I think you've touched upon um, what I really like about this game is that there's a deep layer of symbolism and metaphorical analysis that you can apply to, to every character. They all symbolically work, they stand for something. Um, just as I was talking about uh, early on in the stream with their houses being uh, almost physical manifestations of their personality, etc. Uh, something that a lot of games don't get the opportunity to do um, or don't bother to do. Uh, but uh, they also, yeah, they're, they're written so nicely that, that they do function as people you can empathize with. Uh, and that's what elevates them just from being like redundant, uh, redundant kind of like, I guess what people would call pretentious. Um, I think it's that even just a mask of appearing human, um, all of these different you know layers uh, to their personalities, etc. Um, that you're right that that adds that makes them function as real people. Uh, um, yeah, that's wonderful. Thank you. Have you heard? The military arrives tomorrow. Why did you fill your well up with earth? <laughs> Can I please just refuse to answer that question? If I'm not mistaken, since yesterday, you're no longer the authorized envoy of the powers that be in the town. You can, but then Aglaya Lilich will do the asking. It's actually rather bizarre that she hasn't done that so far. She doesn't know about the Tagler. Of course she does. An Inquisitor, by definition, is a person who knows everything. I'm waiting for the detailed story. What are you trying to dig up? And more importantly, what have you dug up already? Here's a question for, for, for the audience. Um... What what kinds of uh, what character do you think stands out in in the original game? I mean, if you've played it um, as being the most human, and then do you think there's a they they're treated just as well or better in, in the second game? I'm really interested in the, in the the way in which the two games sort of intersect, and whether or not because a lot of people. Like most of the time, yes, like 
Pathologic 2 does deal with its characters, I think, in a, in a better way. Um, but there is still a lot of humanity to these characters, and I guess uh, I don't necessarily see people spring to their to their defense uh, all too often. I'd be curious to know if, if yeah anyone feels if anyone feels that way about these characters as well, or whether you sort of Pathologic 2 is where they feel more human and therefore it's the more engaging character driven game rather than this one which that most people regard as as being more plot driven and the characters not being so memorable i still think the cam- characters are very much memorable in this game but I, I would like to hear other people's thoughts on that no pressure of course though i'll just uh, i'll keep uh, chatting in the meantime with uh, vlad Tough luck, Doctor. I don't trust you. Excuse me, didn't I just help you out this morning? My confession wouldn't be of any use to you, but it could raise too much noise. You'd draw all the wrong conclusions. The consequences could be tragic, especially if the Inquisitor and the Commander get involved. They will, that much I can guarantee you. We'll speak of this again. Here lives an old enemy of the old Gimskis. So he decides to stand against me. Perhaps Aspity can be my ally for the time being. Time to go see my favorite character. I'm honestly, uh, I mean, there's still like character analysis scripts. There's a bunch of them that are like half finished at the moment. And I have like five drafts still for like Aspity. Because, man, I so badly want to do Aspity justice. Um, but I think the big thing, the reason that the character analysis uh, takes so long for me to, to make is that I really want to find the right angle of approach because sometimes i'll start writing one and then i'll realize that the method i'm using to analyze them or the bio uh, even the biographical details i've collected about other relevant historical figures doesn't quite sit right and then i'll sort of have to you know grumpily or metaphorically screw up a bit of paper and uh jam it jam it back in the trash and try again um do i want to go this way not really. What's the time? Ah, oh, plenty of time. But yeah, so I'm trying to think who I've... Who I'm actually happy with. I'm happy with my angle of approach towards two characters at the moment uh, who, who I'm progressing with, uh, which is, at the moment, I think two characters that were requested by people immediately after my Dankowski video was released, which were... Uh, Yulia and Big Vlad. Uh, I'm really liking how those videos are unfolding. And there's a third character as well who I'm enjoying writing about too. Uh, but it's basically, yeah, it's a, it's it's just a rush uh, to see. It's a, like a race to see uh, who will, or which script gets finished first, and then I and I basically just make that one. I focus on that one. I just bounce to whichever script. Uh, I feel most inspired by the time, but I am always here yeah, reading and researching and thinking about the scripts and writing them, etc. And it's a re- yeah, it's a really fun process. Uh, I'm glad I've glad I'm even in the position to make these, and I'm glad that people are watching them. Uh, that just it pleases me, it pleases me very very much um, that that there is interest in them. I have such a soft spot for the Martin brothers, especially in the first game. Uh, I like that Andre and Daniil were already acquainted. But, sorry, but Andre is so unhinged and fun. I'm always amazed at how well this game handled Peter's mental illness, being a Russian game from 2005. 100% agree. Um, the Martin brothers uh, just pop off the screen, don't they? Really, um, they just. En- I think they enter everyone's imagination. I haven't encountered anyone who who was like, oh, I don't. You know, I don't like the Sir Martin brothers. Um, I genuinely can't. Uh, I've never had anyone be like, "Oh, these guys suck." Um, they're just—they're wonderful characters, uh, and I 100% agree with um, the 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 mental illness comment as well. Uh, it is really sensitively handled, um, especially. I mean, that—that's mainly what my video about him centered around is his. Is the is mental health in relation to to artists, and I think that's it's better not to ask. 
silence is golden. That, uh, that, that sort of interplay between artists and mental health is really dangerously uh, misrepresented in just a lot of popular media. Um, so it, it is really nice to see a, a game discuss that you you don't have to be um you know men- mentally uh, unwell to, to make art and that being depressed or in or alcoholic etc etc is not the mental state that is required to make to make good art um your talks with peter and the way peter's quest sort of finishes even in this game is you sort of refuting the idea that he has nothing to live for and that his he hasn't finished his creative journey just because he's made what he sees as his magnum you know he's his magnum opus i think it's really important that art itself discusses that i think um and i mean a lot of a lot of smaller art projects do right they they accurately represent um mental health but there's a lot of really big works um and even a lot of works that about mental health that become really popular that hammer this idea of um this sort of unrelenting negativity and the exploration of art through depression etc uh and and what really interests me you might disagree with this um but it's it's harder for works of art to have arcs that actually create from sadness joy you know it's it's really easy just to just to depress people or just to simply like play some sort of pop song and and make them really happy but to do a really natural progressive uplift of of a character or a setting etc it's really difficult to do and i i do think pathologic handles that handles that really well sorry i went off on a huge tangent there but yes thank you for that i Aston martin brothers um absolutely and that little connection between andre and and daniel is really nice as well um it again it sort of expands the world just a little bit uh and also places into mind this like the idea of this the town just being like a singular cosmos um because there's nothing really that exists outside of the town uh, but these little details can almost fool us into thinking that that there is and that's that's really cool um it's the kind of soft little world building details uh, that allow the player to sort of extrapolate and imagine what the what the outside world must look like even in the supposedly false or, or real memories of, of these characters you know um, it's really cool all right <clears throat> now to uh <clears throat> yeah Esperty is uh, not not happy that bitch she has us all over a barrel sir freaking prize stop with the swearing you can do some finger wagging who are you talking about i know all the local bitches all right none of them can surprise me Gee, she's she's grumpy this morning although there are dark fibers stirring maria but i'm talking about yesterday's sweetheart i forbid you to call her glia names got it haha ha, that was nice so the two of you are getting along just fine so what are you another minion of hers now what did she seduce you with i think you wouldn't be so starry eyed towards the bloodsucker they were planning to send here first no no i would not i wonder are female inquisitors allowed to sleep with men i can't help imagining how she looks stripped of cover is she just as self-assured i sure would respect anyone who could tame her she's uh she's a very interesting uh character this is a very uncomfortable <laughs> conversation inquisitors can do whatever they want they're the only ones to impose limits on themselves All right, um... the inquisitor proceeds with her terrible harvest is she pretty at least her baby doll oh my god yeah uh the they didn't get Asperdy's voice acting right until pathologic 2 um I, i'm really i'm still not a fan of her voice her her presentation here uh but they just they nail her in, in pathologic 2 it's it's perfect 
S, but he said he ran any chance now what Lady Angle's digging out. Uh, I think so. I think you have to dig a bit deeper to find the humanity and pathologic one's characters. They're not stylistically or thematically right at all. But it reminds me a bit of Wes Anderson's films. A lot of people regard them as cold and unemotional until you get used to the fact that all the characters are a little like aliens. Yeah, I think I think I'd agree with you. Is that yeah, a lot of the, and again, I wonder if this is like a presentation thing, um, but sort of these really uh, primitive face models, you know, uh, add add to that lack of humanity that sort of lack of depth we don't approach them in the same way we see them more as video game characters as symbols rather than the characters in pathologic 2 who can sometimes you know trick you uh just for a second sort of be like wow that, that's a real person oh no wait no no it's not um but there is still you know there's still humanity in them uh, like Asperity's lines here i mean they're very they show her personality through pretty perfectly um she's quite bitter uh quite jealous um she's sort of you know she's got a lot of enemies and she doesn't exactly play nice she's quite brutal uh quite flat i guess in in her effect and in her approach uh there's no no beating around the bush i guess with her um and that's you know that's a human quality in itself but when you sort of first meet her, she's really, she feels still like no beating around the bush, but a bit more evasive in her answers. And on, on the first day, I guess everyone's acting, especially cryptically because of the story. And you're right. You have to sort of dig, dig a wee bit deeper, not just in, in reading between the lines in their dialogue, but in the actual time spent playing the game. And then the characters sort of start to form uh, imaginary lives um, in the back of your head. That's, that's why the setting being presented so immersively and atmospherically is really important because then you can start to fill in gaps that the developers themselves couldn't fill. And you're not, it's not like you're modding the game or, or doing anything like that to give them schedules or something. Um, all you're doing is accepting the fact that the world is in some sense, a simulation of this crumbling cosmos, this crumbling infrastructure. And you can imagine what these characters are, are doing and thinking uh, while well, you're not, while well, you're not with them, and the fact that even if you go into their house and they're standing exactly where you left them, you can imagine what they've been up to for the rest of the day, uh, and I, f I find that I find that really interesting. How we as players have the capacity to do that, we don't need everything spelled out and animated for us, and I guess there's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of emphasis on big flashy presentation. Um, in a lot of video games but i think the lesson that a lot of game those games could learn from pathologic which they probably will never learn from pathologic because not many not many uh big game developers would probably want to make a game inspired by pathologic but less less is more basically uh it's that old adage it's really simple um but the imagination human imagination can do a lot of the heavy lifting for the designer and that goes underappreciated, I think, personally. And it's the same with finding those scraps of humanity. Once you find them in these characters, they sort of grow and blossom from there. And your characters don't need to be like fully rendered either. You just need to sort of grab like a scrap of of humanity, like a line that that makes them relatable. And then you're sort of the brain is like away running with that, right? You've you've got a character forming in your head, even if that character is slightly different. Uh, an understanding from the person sitting next to you uh, you've got you've got a character you've got someone and of course the the writer still has to flesh them out and the good thing about pathologic is is that they do um, so you can't you can't leave it all to the player uh, obviously but you can leave some of it to the player and I guess it's it's finding that magic finding that magic balance uh, that so many designers find really difficult right yeah if that makes sense, I, I hope I'm not just rambling and being uh, vague and uh, sort of I'm in like my own little game design floating vacuum or something. Um, but I think that's that's what I really appreciated about Pathologic um, is that it doesn't it doesn't hold you by the hand. Uh, and again, I know that's like such a trite and cliched thing to say in 
in response to to game design but it doesn't hold your hand in relation to the actual playing of the game but also the way in which its characters are presented you're you're expected to infer a lot of what we know about the characters um and judge them not just on what they say but on what others say about them and what others say that they are doing even if the game can't present them actually doing those actions uh, there's still your imagination like kicking into gear right we don't need to imagine Aspity like storming up to the Inquisitor and sort of grabbing her by the shoulders and like shaking her around or like spitting at her feet or whatever. We've just got her sort of unbridled hatred, like the dialogue's enough. Yeah. Ah, the leech won't crack. Thinks he's the smartest and he also seems to think he can get out of this deal and that well with his hands and name clean, but that's fine. I know how to make him talk, all right? How? It's simple. Just reveal to the world all those thousands of lives that have perished in a few days because of him. And to think that I, a simple girl that I am, blamed the father. Shame. What a shame. What are you talking about? It was he who ordered to close down the termitary. He hid the truth from his father, blamed it all on some imaginary strike. He knew how to get to the old man, to make him mad, to make him damn everyone inside. Wait, so he knew about the epidemic beforehand? Spot on. Didn't see that coming. Yeah, on the other hand, he's a loyal son still. He wouldn't like to see his father's head roll. Uh, and oh, can the mother make heads roll? Both of them will stick to that secret tooth and nail. I'd have a go on it myself, but that change in girl's a better idea. Thank you, Aspidy. That explains a lot. Very helpful. All right, let's wander back and once again, say hello to big, to, not big lad, young lad. Uh, he's got some explaining to do. And I am, I think, a lot of people, like the, the choice on who to send in the original, in, no, not the original, in the second one, who to send to the abattoir to be, or who to send to the termitary to be judged. That's like a really solid moral choice in the, in the second game. Uh, and I and I do like how there's no there's no simple answer. I mean, young Vlad seems seems in some sense to be to be a better person than than his father. But in another sense, you wonder if underneath it all, I mean, he's still his father's son. He's still he's still a businessman. He's still looking to to exploit the people, just in a in a slightly different fashion, slightly more humanist sense, I suppose. Um, you know he's not he's not like an overwhelmingly great choice and he's also the the actual guilty party no i find it very interesting when you're trying to because i can't remember it's been it's been a little while um but that choice centers around um Where are the words? Where have the words gone? That choice centers around your, like, whether you earn the kin's, like, respect and, and loyalty, right, as Artemy. Uh, what you choose to do with with the old Gimskis. Uh, I find that, yeah, I find that really interesting. Can you refuse... Do you think young lad looking at the territory is dramatically worse than what Isidore did in the crude sprawl? See, and again, like that's another really that's another really good point is that uh, in offering that moral choice, the game sort of forces the player to uh, cast judgment on on their on Artemis father's actions as well at the same time. Um, I guess like the the really cruel thing about the way the story is set up is that, in some sense, like. Yes, what young Vlad did is worse because what Isidore did worked, you know. Um, if we're going simply by virtue of, of success, then uh, young Vlad basically killed a lot of people horribly, uh, almost for nothing. I mean, he didn't end up stopping the plague. He, he tried, but, but he failed. Um, but I guess, like, equivocally, that they're, they're about the same, really, in terms of... Uh, level of level of drastic action uh so no i i don't think what young lad did 
um, necessarily is is dramatically worse other than probably I mean I can't remember the dynamics of the culture at the time when the plague broke out the first time and when Isidore was you know boarding stuff up but uh, young Vlad's actions inadvertently have the effect of like really heavily damaging the the inherent local culture of the area by killing so many so many people of that local culture um, you sort of can't imagine how many how much information how much oral information was was lost um, judging by the number of people who died how horrible it is in the cemetery uh, at the end of the last stream yeah there's that line from Tyre where she says oh, all the people are really angry at us that you know we can hear like screaming and yelling and banging on the doors and and whatnot and that gives the that gives what young Vlad did I think a more visceral impact because you can sort of again you can imagine it happening uh, and it's meant to be happening like right now etc because um, the crude sprawl I mean he I said oh like barred up this area was it i think i've got my my timeline mixed up is it the is it the fire the fire then the plague or the plague then the fire and then they rebuild the crude sprawl and then this because the fire is what triggers them to build the the termitary right so it's plague fire this plague i think timeline wise i can't remember exactly all right, time to have this chat. Where are oh, he's hiding? Look, he's hiding. He's, uh, uh, he's almost perfectly hidden. Almost. Nice try. You're not escaping from me that easily. There's this thing that needs to be done. So you haven't left. That certainly does you credit. So this is the person who's responsible for turning the termitary into a mass grave. It's a good opening. Who told you that? That's not important. What's important is whether I'm going to relay that to the Inquisitor. No use denying it now. I knew the truth would come out when the cemetery is unlocked. I just hoped I would have time before that. No such luck, I suppose. So you did the best to conceal this heart. Perhaps you know about the more about the plague than you show either. What's with this well of yours? I did indeed hide a certain crime I've committed, and I believe that something nasty was indeed dug up and bred deadly bacteria. The only snag here is that those two insightful observations are not connected in any fashion. So you knew that the bacteria originates underground, and you never told me. Don't know anything for sure. Moreover, I found nothing to support that theory. The earth in the well is clean. The deeper I dig, the cleaner and denser it becomes. Pure sand and solid white clay. But why didn't you tell me of your suspicions? Because if my theory proved to be correct, we would have no choice but to raise the town's residential districts. Wipe out everything between the abattoir and the Gorkon. Why in the world? Over the years, the people have bored countless holes into the ground. All for naught. They always had a layer of compacted clay. The town is full of those dead-end burrows, those underground creep holes. Who would ever believe they all, that they all came to solid rock, like a prisoner's tunnel comes to a brick wall? That's not a good enough reason to give that order. I can't peek inside your head now, can I? Perhaps you wouldn't issue that order. But the general who's arriving here with his forces tomorrow wouldn't listen to you mumbling that it's nothing more than a theory. He'd just do it. Perhaps you're not far from the truth. Can you swear to me that there was nothing in the well, on your family's honour? Yes. You can have a sample and analyze it if you will. A sample of sand and clay. If it's necessary, I can even call my people and have them dig it up again. But honestly, you're going to need a deeper hole than that. No need for that. How can I get into the abattoir? I've only been in there four times in my life. The only way in for me has always been through the termitary. Every morning, a crowd of workmen always comes out of it, walks between the buildings, and is swallowed up by the abattoir's main entrance, the one they call the gorge. Tai Chik would always open and close it himself, but now he's dead and you're out of luck. Yes, I'm aware of that. So nice, we got another sort of layer is that we see this, the layer of sickness that came from underneath the town's foundations. Alright, so we need to go to the cemetery again. Uh, and I guess Vlad feels much more distance from his consequences than it probably was. And I think that might be what generates, for some players, like less sympathy towards young Vlad um, because what is what Isidore did was in the past and has sort of already been I guess quite dealt with in a way um, 
not conclusively, but uh, you know, uh, whereas young young Vlad is is there for the player to be judged. Um, he's a moral choice for the player to make. Basically, what happens to him. Cut through here and then uh, try and beeline our beeline our way up uh, through the cleaner districts here. I might as well take the slightly safer route again. How's my infection doing? Slowly climbing. Something else to eat. Just wolf that down. Hello, good sir. Um, how much money do I have? Thirty thousand. Still not doing too badly. Uh, just got to deal with this uh, infection somehow. It's basically the uh, the the crux of the matter. So yeah, just um, more repetitive violence. I like how the yeah, the AI of those robbers just insists on uh, looting the person they just killed instead of fighting the other uh, the other individual who's beating them in the back of the head as they do so not particularly intelligent uh, the, the robbers uh, really are much more of a threat in the in the second game I mean for a multitude of reasons but I found the fact that they sort of hunted and traveled in packs to be both more realistic like they're forming like little gangs uh, and much harder to deal with gameplay wise you, you couldn't really uh, you can't really confront a gang of robbers in pathologic 2 but you can just uh, you can at least backpedal backpedal to high heaven in uh, this one I mean that has its own problems but you especially in an enclosed space like in that uh, really early bachelor quest where you have to have to fight all the robbers in there the warehouse but even that's doable provided you bought, bought enough bullets now here's yeah you can never enter this right but i always found it interesting that yeah there's another bar and it uses the same the same signage as andre's bar and i sort of wondered whether whether it was a storehouse or something uh, something similar because i remember oh god it's uh it's years ago now actually um that i that i ran it but I ran, I ran a pathologic uh, like tabletop campaign uh, with some people who'd never, who'd never played the actual crap, 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 crap. Uh, who'd never, ah, damn it, who'd never played the the game before, and I remember trying to to sprinkle in a couple of sort of extra locations because the players, as everyone does, they they became really fast friends with with Andre, and I had him at one stage of the of the campaign uh shift his shift his bar to that to that location i thought always thought it was slightly curious how it was never um how it was never used in in the game uh itself or how it's never even sort of mentioned or referenced uh what else can i do do i need anything else to eat not really missions that sounds awesome. It was awesome. I have really fond memories of that uh, of that campaign. Um, these days, I think you know, I think it would need just a little bit of a little bit of tinkering because um, I, th I think there are a couple of bits that didn't quite work uh, the way I wanted them to. But I mean, that's it's tabletop. That's it's like role playing for you. But um, overall, I thought yeah, I thought it was a really uh, it was a big success. Everyone seemed to enjoy it and really get into the get into the roles of the of the doctors just just as well as as they might have done uh, in in the game itself. Yeah, I'm. Uh... <sighs> when was that? When did I run that? That must have been like it was different. It was before Pathologic Two came out, I think. I think I was I think I was in the middle of running it as Pathologic 2 came out or as I was just finishing running it as Pathologic 2 came out. So what's that? 4 5 years ago. 
Oh, that's, yeah, that's scary. Um, but, uh, yeah, the, the campaign, it, it was a lot of fun. Um, it was especially interesting to try and transpose simulated elements from the, the game and then try and simulate them myself. I think the thing I had the most trouble with, actually, was uh, simulating uh, time, uh, which, of course, is, is one of the key like one of the foundational elements of pathologic but i had to yeah. you know you, you could never predict where the players are going to walk next necessarily you could you could to a certain degree if they were just following one like quest chain uh but i sort of always, i had to like drop a chart of like it would take this, this much time to travel here this much time to travel here and then for little actions that i didn't expect that they would take i just had to imagine oh that would take 15 minutes that would take half an hour that might take an hour sort of thing and then slowly but surely, the, what I really liked about it is that at one point the players, they started treating, I mean, as they do, as some people do in, in this one, how you're supposed to, uh, is treat time as, as a like a life bar in, in and of itself. Um, that slowly, with every action that they took, uh, time was, was running out, even just a little bit. And I really liked that the players were able to to immerse themselves to the point. I'm quite proud of the fact that they were able to immerse themselves to the point uh, that they could that they could do that. But I guess the question is, yeah, like I, I'd like to run it again, um, even if it even if it was an online campaign. But I'm not sure how well it would work if people had already played the game. Um, whether they just sort of be they'd be cycling through the, the motions again. Um, I guess for it to remain novel, um, I'd have to mix it up a bit more. Which I did do, actually, in, in the original one. I didn't spoil everything for them. And they, didn't, they certainly didn't succeed wholly. A lot of characters died. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, it, it, it was a lot of fun. Um, I mean, yeah, just like, uh, just thinking now, I mean, I don't know, yeah, trying, trying to run it online, I guess, is, is a possibility, I don't know, I, I was thinking of, yeah, of setting up, setting up a Discord for the, for the, for the channel, um, or doing something, a Discord through the Patreon, or something similar that, uh, that might let me, yeah, do something like that. But again, like, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I would love to run it again, but it would it would need it would need some more work. Uh, it was a huge amount of fun, though. I think my favorite bit that I did, um, yeah, wonderful memories of this bit where I played around with uh, the like the dreams, uh, and there was one bit I sort of convinced them that they were playing through. I guess uh, like the the Marble Nest demo, which was which was out at the time, I convinced the players that they were playing through like they'd they'd woken up one day or woken up out of a coma, and everything had gone to shit, uh, even more than it had already gone, and they sort of struggled through. And they were trying. I sort of dropped some hints about what would happen in the real world on that day and in, in the in the dream. And then at one stage, when they had a certain a certain vision. Uh, they sort of woke they woke back up and then they did actually manage to tag on to a couple of the things that i hinted at i alluded to in, in the dream and again like that's that's the kind of immersion i really like to to promote in in the in the experience um no it's yeah that brought back a lot of a lot of really great memories um it, it was a it was a hugely fun hugely hugely fun yeah Anyway, <clears throat> here he is. Here he comes. Listen, everyone, this is a doctor. He came from outside. Will you do me a favor? Gladly, will you let me into the abattoir? Will you bring me the person that got us all locked in here when everybody gets sick? And what would happen to that person? Well, I want to ask him why he had us locked up and then ask him some more. It doesn't take a genius to see that you're going to kill him. No, we're not going to kill him. We'll take him. I refuse. If you do what I'm asking of you, I'll open the passage to the abattoir for you. That changes things. Wait here, I'll be back. 
You just bribed me, little girl. With uh, so good job. You're you're a fine negotiator. I think another really fond memory I have from that tabletop was the way in which some characters, some players, really got uh, immersed in in the role to the degree that they were doing actions that essentially constituted like self harm. You know how. I really played up one particular infected person sort of stumbling down the street uh, with their arms out, you know, sort of looking for a hug. And one of the characters, I mean, the, just at, at that point, I don't even think they were that badly off, but they just sort of, they felt this intense pity for this poor person and they gave them a hug and because of that, they got infected. Um, and basically they, they derailed uh, a large proportion of the, of the campaign, a large proportion of the experience. Um, but that wasn't a bad thing, like it was a really good derailing, it was the use of, uh, like, empathy. Uh, like, that's something that I liked watching people do in just in just the video game itself. Uh, and, and for me to, to have even managed to simulate that, uh, or for a player to have, to have glommed onto that in the, in the game, in the game that I was running, I mean, that, that was really amazing. That, uh, and then sort of, yeah, like the next couple of days was, was really a fight to keep this one character alive as they um, still tried to go about their tasks, but they slowly got, they, they got worse and worse. I know, right? Yeah, it, it, it was amazing. Um, and this talk is just making me want to, want, want to run it again more and more. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll have to think of something. Yeah, tabletop RPG campaign is a great way to uh, to share to share it with uh, with people because um, I think as well like a lot of especially a lot of the video games uh, that that I happen to play which, which are very old um, or very difficult uh, or just like aggressively like too too confronting visually in some sense for some people. Um, I do think, uh, that's a mean one, it's not even an infected area, um, that it is a really great way to, to allow the, the people to experience, to experience the world, um, that, that you love so much, and, and also to, uh, to emphasize the elements that you think are the, are the most important about that experience as well, uh, and I do like, yeah, the, the fluidity, what I like about, like, tabletop role-playing is, is the interplay between, the storyteller and the the people participating because quite often especially in my very early days of, of playing um i would sort of come to the table with a sense of the story i want the story to go in this direction and while i well i've never been one to like railroad players i always eventually like nudge them back onto the main path but um more and more i, I find that e even doing that is is less satisfying than just like writing a setting um, and then providing a couple of initial hooks and writing out some characters and, and whatnot and then just having the pl having play sort of unfold from there um, I find I get I get much more dynamic uh, engagement that way and it also lets me lets both me and the players emphasize what what they want to see out of the out of the campaign the most um, it is yeah it's it's a really special um, it's a really special experience uh, the the whole tabletop role playing um, and it's another I guess I would like to make videos on it uh, as well but I'm not sure I'm not exactly sure how <laughs> um, what the structure of that would look like um, or whether it'd just be me rambling about this kind of thing. Which I'm, you know, I don't know if people would be interested in, in watching that in a video essay format. Um, I, I'd, I'd certainly make a video on it um, on my own experience. Um, but I guess I haven't done much. I probably should should do some more research into like academic readings about tabletop role playing. Because um, I mean, my my area of interest and expertise is certainly in 
video games, but I guess, yeah, I'm leaving, I'm, t I'm sort of leaving a, a field untapped there, a field that I'm really invested in already. Uh, just keep going. Almost there again. This is like the fifth, sixth time. Because, yeah, what else did I, um, I would like to run, there's some other game that I was thinking of that I wanted to convert to tabletop. I guess what's difficult is finding, finding the right system sometimes. Like for the pathologic one, I just, I had to, I built my own system from the ground up. Um, I mean, I just used D20 mechanics or whatever, uh, because that's what everyone was familiar with. Um, but I, yeah, I had to use my own sort of whoop, plague and uh, other such like mechanics, uh, and I think that as well as what I'd what I'd tinker with uh, on revisiting it. Uh, I, yeah, that and that and my health. I think my health system I made slightly too, almost too in depth. I think people were like juggling, chug, juggling a lot of different damage, damages and whatnot. Um, etc. Like, for, in an attempt to add realism at the time, I think I'd gone for like a limb, limb damage system almost. You know, uh, where people were were looking out after specific points and could could wound people in specific areas. I guess like like Fallout or whatever. Um, but I'm not. Yeah, in retrospect, I'm not sure whether that was a success or not. It certainly worked for a while. Uh, but but it became it slowed things down a wee bit too, um, which was sometimes to the detriment of a, of a session. I've used yeah I've used fate um, before and I did I did enjoy that for the couple of sessions I used that for but I actually haven't used GURPS but I know that GURPS is really good um, because it has all of these different settings books as well like you have a lot you have like a huge range of different kinds of GURPS worlds that you can run um, but yeah I'd, uh, I would like to try GURPS but I'm not sure um, not sure when I don't, I don't have enough time to do anything <laughs> uh, seven left seven is credits I've come to relay an order issued by a little girl that's just lovely are you talking about murky no one tire tai chi do orders come from beyond the grave now? Summons is even? You're not so far from the truth. Are you joking? She really wants to see the person who ordered the cemetery closed. But as far as I understand, you're not the only person she's asked for assistance with this matter. Barak will probably ignore her request, but as for Clara... Yes, I must go there immediately. If I don't, they'll kill my father. Please warn him. Tell him not to go to the cemetery under any circumstances. I shall go immediately. I must come to them before my father beats me to it. It's very honourable of you. I'll warn your father and follow you as soon as I can. I feel like I get a chance to speak in your defence. I'm coming, big lad. Uh, this uh, stream may have to come to a slightly premature end before I finish the day. Um, just because I have, yeah, got a few other, a few other errands. Other things to do before the day is out. Um, but I'm hoping to stream again in just a couple of days. Great to see you all there again if you if you can make it. Uh, it's really appreciated um, having having someone there in, in the chat who I can uh, who I can bounce off of. Have you been able to go through any of the games in other languages with another speaker? Recently played some of the classic HD Polish fan translation. No, I haven't. But that sounds that sounds really engaging. Um, I mm, I would I would like to now that you now that you say that because um, I've always been curious even about the original Russian translation. You know um, how characters are affected affected there. Uh, I wonder if there's any. I suppose there's not. Is there like any like online playthroughs with with an original speaker or someone who can like translate? I, I guess that would take forever and a day to to put together and make. Uh, but it, it would it would be really cool. Oh, 
it's hard. No path is long and hard. Is it true that you cover for your son? What is this slanderous rubbish? I know everything. Drop the act. Why on earth would I cover for him? It was he, not you, locked up the cemetery before we were at the epidemic, wasn't it? Oh, also, to, to follow up on that, was, you say the first scene with Avian is like overtly suggestive. Were, were there any other really interesting changes? Like how how far did you how far did you get through the the fan translation? And like, were there any other moments that you thought, oh, that's really interesting? Like a really large gap in characterization. Uh, was he not you had locked up the cemetery with flew where the epidemic wasn't it my boy was absolutely in the right naturally he was at a loss his decision was too radical he couldn't inform everyone because it was just that kind of day you lot came to crowd us when it was already too late we knew by then that unlocking the cemetery would mean destroying the town yet you've decided to take the fall for him as if the fall was obligatory his hand was forced and his mouth was shut he had no choice he cared for me in his own way. He did exactly like I taught him, and so I did my best to care for him. When it was my turn, what are you going to do now? I'm responsible for everything. Since the day when I learned of his actions from him personally, I'm, if I might add, I remain responsible for them. Well, it's your choice. What? I advise you to take care of the cemetery. They weren't particularly eager to visit it. Why would I? It seems it's like his dwellers are all too eager to bring to account the person who's causing so much harm. Once again, I see the... <laughs> Oh my, wow. That's, wow, that's ruthless. Big, big Vlad looks like a slug in this game. He's got, he certainly does, he certainly does have an interesting look about him. Uh, I mean, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. But very blunt. I got through day two. But it was very interesting. Daniel has an extremely stilted way of speaking, most textbook like. I guess yeah, that 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 fits with his with the general like stereotypical um, like uh, discussion, right? Like uh, about Dankovsky is that he's he like does everything literally like by the book. He's a he's a medical nerd almost, you know. Uh, that's yeah, that's that's really interesting. Um, I wish, yes, I wish I was fluent in, in other languages. Uh, the most I can muster is sort of a half fluency in Japanese, I think is, is about it. Uh, I, I really haven't got very far in learning any other languages, uh, which it really feels like something I should do, uh, because learning languages is, is extremely rewarding. Uh, I just, again, I use that excuse all the time. Don't have enough time. Um, yes. Yeah. Once again, they see the root of all evil in me. There's no need for you to hurry. Don't worry, your son is going to, uh, to fill in. You just stay there, uh, must be hot in that coat. Oh, wait, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, I forgot. Frank Alunzis thinks you look like a slug. I'll just, yeah, I'll see you later. Good, goodbye. I hope he doesn't take that uh, too personally. But he, he knows it was you, not not me that said that, you know. I was, I was just passing on the information. Oh, it's oh, it's too late. I'm already like, I'm already walked away down the street, you know. I If I could turn back, I would, but you know, it's oh, look at so far. I'm so sorry. What have I done? I shop here already? Yes, I did. First executive, you talk to us really juvenile way of speaking and everything. Yeah, that is surprising because you sort of they're meant to be like austere reflections of the uh, the game the game system itself, like a bratty high schooler. Guess is there a bratty high schooler underneath, just like on like big platform shoes like The Bachelor? Yes, yeah, you look tough, but underneath I know that you're just just a brat. God, I love the way I love the way that they do that. Just the way that their head head follows you. Such a nice little detail, but it works 
it works so well. It's just they really do feel like uh, is there a range? No, they just sort of they follow you. Also, always thought he resembles a worm a bit. I just noticed he got a painting of one in his house. Maybe I'm losing my mind. No, I don't think you're losing your mind. I uh, I did wonder at some stage myself as well. I can't remember how or why uh, it came up in my mind, but I was like, oh, is he of like, is he of some relation to this worm, to this thing that's like hanging on the wall? I think that was during my first playthrough. I was like, oh, like what is this kind of thing? Um, But I don't think no, I don't I don't suppose he, he has any relation to the people of the step. He just sort of seems to be the the big boss from the town who wears his fancy clothes and does his own thing, right? Does anyone else really like the music in this area of town? I really love the just the really slow droning feel it feels a lot more subdued than, than the other areas of town which i mean reflects by its very, reflects this district by its very nature which is another part of why the town feels so cohesive is that each area has its own sort of audio signature um but this, yeah these these tracks in particular they're really good for um sitting and reading reading too all right yeah 10 minutes to go before i got a um Cut the stream short today, unfortunately. Uh, but again, I, sh I should be back uh, in a couple of days' time. So we'll just see what uh, what Tyre has to say. I've deli go? delivered your message, told Gimpsy the Younger he promised to come. He did come. What have you done to him? You had him locked up for now. Fears fair. He locked us up. Now it's our turn. We'll see how it goes. Can I talk to him? No. For the butchers to let me in, please. I will. You'll get the right of passage. Come back half an hour before midnight. The bottle will be rolled away. Good. This is good. Let's see if I can sleep and even finish this day. Um... Do you prefer the look of the mega structures in this game or in the sequel? That is a very provocative question. Um, you're putting me on the spot. Uh, that is, yeah, that's a tough one. Um, I really, that's that's all good. No inane questions. Questions are what, are what, you know, I, I'm all about. I love to get the questions. Uh, and it's not an inane question. It's a really important one. Um, as you've probably already gleaned about me, uh, I have a, <laughs> I have a really weird fascination with digital space um which in itself uh others others might call a name um the that's really hard um there are some buildings in town that i prefer the look of in this game the, the interior of the abattoir in the second game is very much superior but the outside of it in the first one, I think I like slightly more. Um, I think that's a color palette thing for me. I think I like the way it looks on the outside a bit more. The inside of the Termitary, I like more in this one just because of the layout and the general grungy feel. The one in this, the Termitary in the second one is a lot more claustrophobic, which also works um, but, uh, oh, but the, now that I say that, I mean, the one, in, the one and two also has just so much atmosphere to it. I guess I, I like, I like Tyre's room in this one more than I do in the second one, but I actually prefer the Termitary in the second one to the first one, but not by much. Some days it would probably change. Um, this is the big one though, isn't it? I mean... Which polyhedron is better? That's a that's a bloody hard question. The polyhedron in the second game is much better to climb. Much, much better to climb. 
And I also like the fact that in the second one you can see it all over town because there's none of that early computer fog, you know. But there's <laughs> the inside of the polyhedron in this game. Uh, that means that means a lot to me um, as a person. Uh, the feeling of going inside the polyhedron and then going inside inside the polyhedron uh, to the to the garden. I mean, like shit, like that changed me uh, as as a player of video games that changed me um i don't think i mean whatever it looks like in the second game whatever it's gonna look like can it beat can it beat nostalgic memory i don't know i like the inside of the polyhedron um it's better to climb in the second one it's slightly i like how it glows in the second one too but i also like how it's more easily identifiably made of blueprints in the first one uh that gives it a really surreal structure uh that the other one that the second one it doesn't quite have as much um maybe i prefer the polyhedron from this game just overall um even though the second one is much more satisfying to climb yes hell yes the polyhedron music in this one is is just it's transcendent right it's uh that's part of the reason i like it so much um yes uh mago mago is it mago norganic mago organic uh it's it's so good though isn't it it's so good uh what did i say half an hour before midnight can i sleep that long without dying can I sleep that long without breaking my... Without running over time? I don't know. What is my stats? I need to take some antibiotics. If you can answer in the next five minutes, what does the audience think of the uh, of the mega structures, Frank Alunzi's? Can you answer your own? Can you answer your own question? What mega structures? Do we prefer? Because I think I yeah. Haha -ha, yeah the the tables have the tables have turned. It's a it's a really hard question because that that gets me thinking because you don't know how long I've wanted to make a video on on those two structures. And again, it's it's like the Aspidy thing. I really want to do them justice. Um, and I think yeah very very soon uh, I would like to sit down like knuckle down and uh, actually make make a big video about them. Uh, but yeah, we'll see how that goes. Uh, but boy, it's 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 on the list of of things I really want to achieve this year uh, is to get a is to get a good video out. So that's immunity. Do I even have any? Yes, I do. This won't kill me, will it? No, I'll take that one, and then I have this. Sleep for a bit. So the Harris Bex is like I've got. I've made my choice. Uh, I believe the settlement can be saved. So he's sort of foreshadowing some stuff there. Hunger. Wolf down my fish. At eight. Uh, cathedral interior. Yeah, it's awesome uh in in the first one um i still have have no idea what that face is uh right that weird that really weird face that's carved into the into the ceiling um in the first one it's really bizarre and i don't think it ever goes explained i is it meant to be a memorial to farkard the architect i don't know but um it, trippy is the right word for it. Uh, in the second one, it feels more like a real building, but I'm not actually sure. I'm actually sure if I prefer that. Um, yeah, I really like just how like dark and gothic and imposing it looks. It looks very much like something out of out of like Vampire, uh, The Masquerade, or, or something similar. One of those, one of the old rule books. It looks like one of those really lovely ink ink drawings. 
who sent me a letter? Or is that? It's open, right? So it just opens it. Okay, I'm I'm hurrying. I'm hurrying. Don't have time for you. Oh crap! Damn it! <laughs> okay, I gotta run quick. I gotta I gotta run quick. That was that was bad. That was bad timing. That was bad luck. That was. Ugh. But that gives you a little bit more time, right? That gives you a little bit more time. So yeah, anyone else? Anyone else feeling brave enough to cast uh, cast their judgment on either the polyhedron or the uh, the termitary abattoir buildings, uh, and which, which one you prefer the look of or the feel of, for whatever reason, it can be completely arbitrary. Go wild. Uh, will that burglar still be there? I have no idea. Can we get out of this lot? We'll try, yeah, we'll try cut through this lot instead, maybe. Sneak your way out. Save again here. A little sparse. Yeah. No, I... I know what you mean. I was thinking that, though, and then I thought... I thought about, yeah, like... I think the detail about the the second termitary is... As you enter through one of the doors... Is the... It's just that pile of corpses under the blanket. Um, I remember seeing that, and I remember thinking that was that was almost one of the most effective bits of world building uh, that that could be. Are you guys gonna? Okay, sure, wh whatever. Um, that was one of the most effective pieces of world building uh, I could imagine. But yeah, I, I do like the dirty, the really dirty and cluttered feel of the, of the first game as well. All right, here's time for our really long expedition into the into the abattoir. Hello, everyone. Good good day. This is an interesting uh, place you got here. Nice, uh, nice decor. Very. Uh, what the? Greetings, sir. Oh. It's, it's hilarious every time. I'm so sorry, Bachelor. It's hilarious. And then, yeah, the soldiers come out of absolutely nowhere. And Block comes out of absolutely nowhere. Uh, I'll just quickly go over what, what you guys have just said before I... Polyhedron 1 makes me feel a lot more, but 2 does a great job of making it feel like... Yeah, I, I agree with that sentiment uh, completely. I think I think we're on the same page with with that one, uh, Rococo Pigeon. Um, I think I think we are we're in agreement there. And yes, the uh, Pavlovic Two is the best kind of remake, and then I don't think it can ever replace the original, even if people maybe think that it does. And that's the biggest shame about the discourse around this game. Almost is that people think that the original game has nothing to offer anymore. But that's that's patently not true, um, and I hope this this playthrough even this playthrough proves it, um, and that my analysis of, and of the game and structure, even just the aesthetics, prove it. They they work in tandem, right? They're not they're not oppositional. Pathologic Two is not intended to replace the original. Uh, they're in conversation with each other. Day is over. I love the canon. Time I also love the canon. It's absolutely insane. That's my favorite the mega structure, the giant cannon. <laughs> All right, um, I'm going to save it here, and I'm going to to head off uh, for now. Um, but that's great. I still managed to finish uh, day eight, and next time I'll easily be able to finish day nine and jump into day ten. Um, thank you so much for coming. 
uh, Rococo Pigeon. Uh, absolute pleasure to have you here. Um, I hope you're able to catch to catch more of my more, my streams um, in future. And yeah, thanks thanks to you as well, Franco Lindsay's. Um, yeah, it was awesome awesome to have people to bounce off of, um, and awesome to have have some get some conversation going. Uh, that that's basically what I all I want to get out of these streams is is just to have have people uh, coming up with all kinds of theory and uh, just giving like personal personal opinions about about the games in question um, and trying to establish why we feel the way we do about video games. That's what I'm really interested in. Um, I ramble on. Uh, thank you, everyone. Stay safe. Uh, you've been wonderful.